A rocket sled launch, also known as ground-based launch assist, catapult launch assist, and sky ramp launch, is a proposed method for launching space vehicles. With this concept the launch vehicle is supported by an eastward pointing rail or maglev track that goes up the side of a mountain while an externally applied force is used to accelerate the launch vehicle to a given velocity. Using an externally applied force for the initial acceleration reduces the propellant the launch vehicle needs to carry to reach orbit. This allows the launch vehicle to carry a larger payload and reduces the cost of getting to orbit. When the amount of velocity added to the launch vehicle by the ground accelerator becomes great enough, single stage to orbit flight with a reusable launch vehicle becomes possible. For hypersonic research in general, tracks at Holloman Air Force Base have tested, as of 2011, small rocket sleds moving at up to 6,453 mph Mach 8.5, effectively a sky ramp would make the most expensive, first stage of a rocket fully reusable since the sled is returned to its starting position, to be refueled and may be reused in the order of hours after use. Present launch vehicles have performance-driven costs of thousands of dollars per kilogram of dry weight. Sled launch would aim to reduce performance requirements and amortize hardware expenses over frequent, repeated launches. Designs for mountain-based inclined rail sleds often use jet engines or rockets to accelerate the spacecraft mounted on it. Electromagnetic methods such as Bantam, Maglifter, and StarTram are another technique investigated to accelerate a rocket before launch, potentially scalable to greater rocket masses and velocities than air launch. Topic. Overview of the problem Rockets, carrying their own propellant with them, use the vast majority of it at the beginning of their journey, accelerating near to the ground, as enshrined in the rocket equation. The Space Shuttle used more than a third of its fuel just to reach 1,000 miles per hour 1,600 kilometers per hour, if the initial velocity were provided outside of its own propellant, a rocket would have a much reduced propellant need, and a greater fraction of liftoff mass could be payload and hardware. An example. Due to factors including the exponential nature of the rocket equation and higher propulsive efficiency than if a rocket takes off stationary, a NASA maglifter study estimated that a 270 m per second launch of an ELV rocket from a 3,000 m altitude mountain peak could increase payload to LEO by 80% compared to the same rocket from a conventional launch pad. Mountains of such height are available within the mainland U.S. for the easiest logistics, or nearer to the equator for a little more gain from Earth's rotation. Among other possibilities, a larger single stage to orbit SSTO could be reduced in liftoff mass by 35% with such launch assist, dropping to four instead of six engines in one case considered, at an anticipated efficiency close to 90%. Electrical energy consumed per launch of a 500 ton rocket would be around 30 gigajoules. 8 each kilowatt hour costing a few cents at the current cost of electricity in the United States, aside from any additional losses in energy storage. 
It is a system with low marginal costs dominated by initial capital costs although a fixed site, it was estimated to provide a substantial net payload increase for a high portion of the varying launch azimuths needed by different satellites, with rocket maneuvering during the early stage of post-launch ascent an alternative to adding electric propulsion for later orbital inclination change. Maglev guideway costs were estimated as $10 minus $20 million per mile in the 1994 study, which had anticipated annual maglev maintenance costs on the order of 1% of capital costs. <laughs> Benefits of high-altitude launches Rocket sled launch helps a vehicle gain altitude, and proposals commonly involve the track curving up a mountain. Advantages to any launch system that starts from high altitudes include reduce gravity drag the cost of lifting fuel in a gravity well. The thinner air will reduce air resistance and allow more efficient engine geometries. Rocket nozzles have different shapes expansion ratios to maximize thrust at different air pressures, though NASA's aerospike engine for the Lockheed Martin the 1033 was designed to change geometry to remain efficient at a variety of different pressures. The aerospike engine had added weight and complexity. X-33 funding was cancelled in 2001, and other benefits from launch assist would remain even if aerospike engines reached flight testing, for example, the air is 39% thinner at 2,500 meters. The more efficient rocket plume geometry and the reduced air friction allows the engine to be 5% more efficient per amount of fuel burned. Another advantage to high altitude launches is that it eliminates the need to throttle back the engine when the max Q limit is attained. Rockets launched in thick atmosphere can go so fast that air resistance may cause structural damage. Engines are throttled back when max Q is reached, until the rocket is high enough that they can resume full power. The Atlas V551 gives an example of this. It reaches its max Q at 30,000 feet. Its engine is throttled back to 60% thrust for 30 seconds. This reduced acceleration adds to the gravity drag the rocket must overcome. Additionally, spacecraft engines concerned with max Q are more complex as they must be throttled during launch. A launch from high altitude need not throttle back at max Q as it starts above the thickest portion of the Earth's atmosphere. Deborah A. Grant and James L. Rand in The Balloon Assisted Launch System, a Heavy Lift Balloon, wrote it was established some time ago that a ground-launched rocket capable of reaching 20 km would be able to reach an altitude of almost 100 km if it was launched from 20 km. They suggest that small rockets are lifted above the majority of the atmosphere by balloon in order to avoid the problems discussed above. Topic. Compatibility with reusable launch vehicles Rocket sleds at China Lake Testing Ground have reached Mach 4 while carrying 60,000 kg masses. A sled track that gave a Mach 2 or greater launch assist could reduce the fuel to orbit by 40% or more, while helping counter the weight penalty when aiming to make a fully reusable launch vehicle. Angled at 55 degrees to vertical, a track on a tall mountain could allow a single stage to orbit reusable vehicle with no new technology. Topic. Rocket sled launches in fiction 
Robert A. Heinlein used a lunar maglev launcher in the Moon as a harsh mistress. One on Earth was built by the novel's end. Dean Ng used a similar system in his 1988 novel, The Big Lifters. Fireball XL5 was launched on a sled from sea level. Silver Tower novel has a rocket launch sled, used to assist in the takeoff of the hypersonic spaceplane America. When Worlds Collide film used a rocket sled to launch the Ark, but the book did not. Borderlands, the pre-sequel has a rocket sled in its initial cut scene. Permission to Die graphic novel in an original James Bond story by Mike Grell, a sled-propelled rocket plays a crucial element to the plot. Ace Combat 5, the unsung war video game features a mission requiring a rocket sled site to be defended during a launch. <laughs> See also